really welcome you to another session of the YM webinar series. Today we're going to have a YM um, Young Professional webinar. The industry has changed, it keeps changing. Back in the days, we used to take a whole tube of light to a pit wall just to measure the volumes and all that. Now things have moved on very fast. For mine planning purposes, we only just get a drone to capture every depth at any point in time for our volume calculations and other sensors. It gives us more accuracy probably than we used to. It's less laborious, I think. And certainly as professionals, we also need to evolve with the trends. And that is what YM does best, providing that environment for our professionals to be addressed and assess current and emerging technologies. We're going to have the views of one very sharp guy. He's been, he's a young professional, right? But then yeah, he's done a lot of things that I think he, he can't share most of the things he's done with us. Um, my name is Lawrence Omari Mensa, I'm president of YM. I'm going to be your host for today. Thank you, host, for this opportunity. Thank you. Okay, my name is Rodney Ni Amatego, and I'm a dramatic engineer. Uh, certified drone pilot, co-founder and CEO for Drone Tech Consult Limited. And today, our discussion will be drone technology and its applications in the resource industry. The, in today's discussion, we'll be talking about the general overview of drone technology, the basic types of drones, industrial applications of drones, applications in the mining and minerals industry, and then conclusions. Drones have been around for more than two decades, but their roots dates back to World War I when both the US and France worked on developing automatic and manned airplanes. But the last few years has been very significant in terms of drone adoptage and then its usage for expansion and then for global awareness. Individuals, commercial entities and governments have come to realize that drones have multiple uses. An manned area vehicle, commonly known as drone, and also referred to as remotely piloted aircraft system by the Civil Aviation Authority. It's an aircraft with no human pilot on board. And then, which were initially made for military purposes. So at first, uh, drones were in there, but all of a sudden they were initially made for military purposes because uh, they realized they were killing their pilots, uh, the Air Force military men that were using the drones. So they needed to bring an unmanned aircraft to help them in achieving good results. In the last years, drones are becoming popular devices for civil applications. Most relevant of them is earth observation. Drones are either controlled by onboard computers or remote control of a pilot on board or in another vehicle. So another vehicle may be a command center or a control room. The use of drones with cameras and sensors in gathering intelligence and information started in the 1950s and has developed steadily since then. There are two basic types of drones. We have the multi-rotor drone and then the fixed wing drone. I would like to talk about the differences between the multi-rotor and the fixed wing drone. So the multi-rotor is cheap while the fixed wing is relatively expensive. The multi-rotor is easy to operate while the fixed wing needs experienced operators to operate. So you need some kind of experience to operate a fixed wing as compared to the multi rotor The multi rotor when someone trains you, you could be able to operate. Uh, you don't need a lot of factors don't, do not need to be considered when flying a multi rotor But with a fixed wing, you need, um, you need to know the weather, you need to know the wind direction, you need to also consider the atmosphere you are flying, like the airspace as well. The multi rotor has vertical and easy landing, while the fixed wing horizontal landing and needs sufficient space to land. So, with the multi rotor, 
uh, it has easy landing, it's able to land vertically, while the fixed wing horizontal landing and needs sufficient space. So the fixed wing, there is another type known as a V2, the vertical takeoff and land. It takes off vertically and then it operates in a horizontal mode, then comes back to land vertically. And so it's another type of fixed wing drone. But basically, there are two types, which is a multi rotor and then a fixed wing. The multi rotor has short flights and low coverage, while the fixed wing has longer flights and higher coverage. Then the multi rotor is suitable for local area mapping, basically, small area mapping, while the fixed wing is suitable for large area mapping. So, comparing the, let's say I want to fly the whole of Pram Pram in a day. I prefer using the fixed wing drone as compared to the multi rotor drone because it can cover a wider area within the shortest possible time. And also, the multi rotor comply with aviation regulations, while the fixed wing often needs permission to fly. So, the multi rotor complies with the aviation regulations. Basically, uh, when you are operating your drone, you need to maintain visual line of sight with your drone. So, uh, mostly, the multi rotor helps and it complies with the aviation, Ghana Civil Aviation Regulations. While the fixed wing, you sometimes need to fly beyond visual line of sight. And then it means you have to get permission from the aviation authority in order to operate. This is a graph showing the time and then the average flight time for some types of drones we have on the market. We have the Solo, the Iris Plus, the DJI Phantom 3, the DJI Phantom 4, we have the uh, SenseFly EB Cyrus Pro. Uh, we, within this graph, we could see that there is an average time of zero to 40 minutes for multi auto drones, whilst for fixed wing, it can go up to 60 minutes. That's one hour. Some can fly for two hours, some even three hours, four hours. And we have some that are also flying for 12 hours. These are some types of drones we have that are on the market. The, some of the multi auto drones we have are the, the Mavic series, the Inspire, Spark, the Phantom. This is Wintra. Wintra is a V2 drone. It's a fixed wing, but it operates in V2, vertical takeoff and land. Currently, we have DHL also using drones to deliver packages for their clients. Uh, within the last three weeks, they've gained certification from Ghana uh, Civil Aviation Authority to use drones in delivering some packages within 50 miles from the location from where they are operating. We also have the Matrix 200, 210, 210 RTK. They are some good drones for monitoring and inspection. We have the Snoop Arrow, which also operates in a V2 mode. These are also agricultural mo uh, drones, which could be used for plant uh, spraying, crop inspection, and many other things. We have the monitoring drones as well. Then we have drone taxis, which are in Dubai, and they are, they are being used to transport people. Uber is also trying to use drones in transportation. Then we have Zipline, which is located in, they are operational, or they are operating in uh, both Ghana and Rwanda currently, and they are using drones to deliver healthcare products uh, to hospitals and then health facilities. Currently, um, Walmart is in uh, partnership with Zipline to use drones in also delivering packages to their clients. And uh, they, 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 they are very, very soon they will come out and then they'll be using drones. Zipline is helping them in using drones to deliver some packages to their clients. These are some payloads that are used on the drones. We have the Silk LMS 291. We have the Mini MCA Tetracam. We have the Sony DSC, we have the Sony Lumex, Micro Hyperspec, Tetracam ADC, the Flare Thermovision. We have some multispectral cameras which are also used on the drones to acquire data. So drone applications by industry. We realized that there are many industries that are applying drones in their operations, such as the infrastructure industry, agriculture, transport, security, entertainment and media, insurance, telecommunication, mining. So on this chart, we could see that the infrastructure industry is only applying about 36% of drone technology in this operation. Whilst agriculture is also applying about 26% and 
transport 10%, security 8%, entertainment and media 7%, insurance 5%, telecommunication 5%, and then mining is also applying just 3% in its operations. So it means mining will have to adopt more drone technology usage in their operations in order to improve upon the safety on site and then also reduce cost. Industrial applications of drones, some industrial applications of drones are uh, security surveillance and monitoring. Uh, currently, the Ghana Army is using drones to monitor um, the border lines just to fight and help people from, to prevent people from entering the country due to this COVID period. And also, drones are also being used for energy inspections, agriculture, healthcare delivery, mining, construction planning and monitoring, real estate marketing, advertising and announcements, precision agriculture, solar panel inspections, firefighting, telecom inspections, construction site mapping, offshore rig inspections. Some common applications of drones in mining and mineral industry are agriculture surveying and 3D mapping, drill and blast planning and monitoring, asset and infrastructure inspections, geotechnical inspections and structure characterization, um, stock power management, tillings monitoring and management, mineral exploration. So this is a typical open pit mine where drones can be applied for pre and post blast analysis, geotechnical monitoring, rock fragmentation, environmental monitoring, equipment inspection, failure analysis, stockpile reconciliations. And this is also a similar image showing basically what was shown in the previous slide. Failure analysis could be done with the drones, the stockpile reconciliation, um, equipment inspection, rock fragmentation, your technical monitoring, environmental monitoring, and then pre and post blast analysis. So some maps that we acquire using drones in mining and related disciplines are auto mosaic maps, 3D print clouds, digital terrain models, 3D textured models, uh, thermal maps for heat and the measurement of temperature and other things. And then we have stockpile volume reports which helps in mine planning. Uh, benefits of using drones in mining, it improves safety on site. It accelerates data collection. So it, it enables us to be able to collect a lot of data within the shortest possible time. And it boosts operational efficiency and productivity. It mitigates the risks for illegal mining. Currently, Anglogo Ashanti Obwasi is in collaboration with a security company that are using drones um, to monitor the air concession and to prevent illegal miners from mining within the concession. So currently I have some of my friends that are working there and they are using drones and they are doing great stuff with the drones there, whereby these drones can fly up to 12 hours and they're able to acquire data and receive information to be able to fish out some of these people who may be mining illegally within the concession. It reduces deviation and improves accuracy in measurement. So, Drones application in the mining industry and many other industries improves and reduces deviations and improves accuracy in measurement, increases speed and reduces cost, and then lower operational costs as well. In conclusion, the advent of drone technology has revolutionized our industries by providing us with new and innovative ways of tackling issues and solving problems in the mining industry, not only to help automate and streamline tax but simply to cut costs and time spent on delivering projects. The mining sector is only getting started with the employment of drone technology and automated tools in their operations. Soon, these little machines will be able to help managers contribute to the safe, productive working environment mining workers have always dreamed of having. As technology becomes smarter, so will drone's capability. Thank you for your attention.